What's up everybody, it's Bryant. I wanted to take the time today to record a video to walk you through how to create a splash screen in Power Apps. Now, if you use any application on a mobile device, most applications come with a splash screen installed in it. A splash screen is the one that opens and you see the little spinning loading sign while it's doing computations in the background, getting your data ready, setting variables, identifying who you are as a user, and then surfacing up the most relevant content to you. So first, let me show you what these sorts of splash screens look like. And you'll notice Power Apps has a splash screen that it provides by default when you load an application, okay? I'm gonna paste in here a link to an app that I made. And when I hit it, you see right there, right away, is a splash screen. Now, we'll land then on the splash screen I built within the app. As it's getting information, it's providing a loading experience here. Splash screens are important for a couple of reasons. One, your users probably would notice a screen that is just sitting there blank for about 10 seconds. And they'd say, I don't even know if anything's happening in the background. They'll hit refresh. They get a little confused. They get frustrated by loading time. But if you can provide them with a screen that makes it look like things are happening because they really are in the background, then you can help increase the time that they feel confident waiting for those things to happen. It's pretty hard to provide an experience that's instantaneous, especially when we are processing large amounts of data. And so creating a splash screen is a great way to give the users a good experience. They're kind of tricky to create in Power Apps, so I'm gonna walk you through how to do that today. Let me just refresh this one more time. You'll see that blue screen there that comes up. That's Power Apps splash screen. The only things you can do to reduce the amount of time that that splash screen is shown is by removing things from the on start of the app. The rest of it is just Power Apps getting ready, connecting to data sources, etc. cetera. All right, internet speed really reduces the time there. The second splash screen is the one I've created. It's got a title for the app, it's got a little loading GIF, and it's got a status that changes as we're going through different pieces. So let me refresh this again. This is Power Apps splash screen. Here's my splash screen. It changes down here what is happening when different things occur. Got the little loading GIF there going around in circles, and then it lands you at what would be called the landing screen here, the landing page. All right, let's hop into the application. I'll show you how it's built. Here we are in the app. Now I've got two screens here, the splash screen and the landing screen. If I click on the splash screen, you'll see here I've got the title of the app. I've got a little loading GIF here, and then I've got down below the status. Now, as soon as all of my code is run, that I'm getting ready for the application, then it's going to navigate me to the landing screen. Okay, that's kind of the function here. If I look in the on visible of this screen, I wanna point out a couple things. First of all, it's going to set my loading status to be whatever makes sense. And here I've just put in some code that I know will take some time. But normally what I'm doing here is I'm setting my theming, I am setting up my navigation components, I am pulling in any data from my data sources that need to needs to be hosted within the app, right? If I'm not gonna do a direct connection, and then I'm gonna do some processing, I'm gonna add values, I'm gonna sort things. All of that code should happen right here. Now, previously, the way that it was best practice was to go into the app and put that all in the on start of the app. Now, on start is being phased out from, from Microsoft Power Apps. So we don't want to load code in here to the on start. You see, I've got one line of code here and that will go into the named formulas piece as soon as that launches and goes GA. But the splash screen itself, has this is where you want to put all that code is in the on visible of the splash screen. And then at the end of it all, I've got this statement here and I'll walk through what this means. Uh, but this is what then sends us to our landing screen. So let's just make this from scratch. We'll start from the beginning, a new screen blank. So we've got our blank screen. This would normally be the first screen. You can always go in the app and change the start screen is a newish property and say that the start screen should be, and instead of screen four here, let me just name this splash screen two. And then in the app here, we'll just change the start screen to splash screen two. That way when I run, you know, I can click here, the three dots and navigate to start screen. It will take me right to the splash screen two. Okay, 
So this is our splash screen. Couple things that we need here. We need the title, we need that loading GIF, and then we need that message to appear underneath the loading GIF, right? I do this in every single application I develop. Splash screens have become increasingly important in my design patterns. Find a way that works for you and stick with it. That's my recommendation. So what I like to do when I design these splash screens is I hit the plus sign, I go down to layout, and I like to use vertical containers. The reason I like containers is that if you ever have to shift or pivot to support multiple different modes of your application so that it can be flexible to be opened in the browser versus a tablet versus a phone, containers make that experience that much better. So I'm going to add a container here. And if this is your first time working with containers, go ahead and watch my other video on containers to get you up to speed. Normally, I would say, you know, set all the properties of this container to be the parent.width and the height to be parent.height, but here I'm just going to drag it, save us time to walk through. This isn't necessarily on designing things with containers. This is more about the splash screen itself. Now, when we add things to a container, it puts them in order. And over here, I can choose. I want them to be based off of the center when we talk about vertically. And then horizontally, I also want them to be centered within my container. Okay. Next, I'm going to insert the top item, which was that application title. It's going to put it right in the center of my container, just like I specified. I'll just make it 20 and let's say semi bold. Actually, let me put that up to 30. And then for width, you know, normally I would say, and yeah, let's just do that. I'll stretch it to be the entire width of the container. That's that stretch property there for a line in container. Okay. And lastly, I will center that text within the label. Here I'll just change the text to say, Splash screen example application. I like to put a title at the top of my splash screens so that people just are reminded what application they, they opened, right? As they're waiting for things to load. Next, let's insert what would be our loading GIF. So here you come in here and you go to media, and under media, you'd insert an image. Uh, the nice thing about loading GIFs is that you can find them all over the place online. Do a Google search for loading GIF, and then you can filter those results on the image tab to be just GIFs. I also like to go to loading.io. Those used to be completely free. You didn't even need to set up an account. I think now you need to set up a free account, and then you can download loading GIFs for you. Um, but what we'll work on here is this one that I pre-downloaded. For height, I'm going to set this to be 300. I like those loading GIFs to be fairly large. And then for the width, we'll just stretch it out for the container. That way, as, as we design, you know, and the screen width maybe gets smaller, we're designing right now for the largest screen possible, that stretch will get smaller and smaller as well and bring it in. Under the image, I've loaded in here already a spinner GIF, and it just, you know, just continues to spin right there as well. Okay, last thing for us to add in here and make sure I've got this container selected, I'm going to add in that label down below that's the status of what's currently being loaded. So I'll click there, let's center it, let's stretch it. And I like this to be maybe 20 in terms of height. Perfect. Now this will be dynamic and I like to use a context variable. Again, if you don't know the difference between context and global, the short version is that context variables are contained to a screen. Now you can pass them back and forth between screens, but here, I like to think of context variables as being just for this one screen. I'm not going to use this loading status anywhere else. Let's just use it on this one screen. And I like to preface my context variables by CTX for context. So we'll call this context loading status. Now, we don't have this set up anywhere to mean anything, so it's going to give us the red X until we've got that figured out. OK, that's all of the elements on here. There is one more, and that would be our navigation button, but we'll get there in a second. So I've got my container, I've got my three things in there, and they lay out nicely. I don't need to use formulas to get them all in place, and that's because we've used a container. Okay, now we need to put our processing code in the on visible of this screen. Now I'm just going to go steal what I had in the previous splash screen. Okay, and the on visible property here. I'm doing a lot of fake patches and stuff because I know that that will take time and that we can actually experience the splash screen. But a lot of times I'm setting up the theming components setting my primary colors, my drop shadow stuff. I'm also setting up my navigation tabs because a lot of my applications have different tabs as you navigate through the screens. 
And I use a collection to do all the navigations and set that up. You may be processing a lot of data in here. You might be refreshing data sources, um, sending email messages. I like to check the user and see if the user is in a certain security group within Azure so I can show and hide certain features to them. Lots of things that you're doing in the splash screen. We want to contain as much as possible to the splash screen itself. So I'll come back here and in the on visible of this splash screen, I'm going to paste that code. So what I've got then is I've got my context variable. Okay, I'm going to start with update context. Here I'm saying processing records. This is going to be whatever you want it to be. So let's just add another line of code here. And let's just say the first one is going to be refreshing data. Now, there's no reason to refresh as soon as you land in an application because by default, opening an app in Power Apps refreshes its connection to the data source. But I'm just going to do this here. Sometimes I provide the users with a little refresh icon within the app that will just kick them back to the splash screen. And when I do that, I do like to include a refresh in case other people are um, accessing and editing the data source while they're in it. OK, so now we've got one that says refreshing data, one that says processing records. And I'm just doing some garbage here to take up time and then getting relevant information. I just think it's important to surface up that message so the users know exactly what's happening. Now let's take a look at this last piece. Okay, Normally, what you'd think would work, let me just comment this out, is at the end of all this code to just throw and navigate. right? If once the code is all done processing, let's just navigate to the landing screen. But anybody who's tried this knows that an error will pop up right away and says navigate cannot be used here. So you can't in the on visible of a screen navigate out to a different place. It just is not possible. It's not allowed in the Power Apps uh, function, you know, Power FX framework. You cannot navigate in the on visible because it would always just navigate away. You'd never be able to get in and see this. So what I like to do instead is I like to use a variable. And the variable that I like is global auto nav. So global meaning it's a global variable, not a context one, and auto nav. And if that is true, that variable value is true, it's going to select a button. Now, I don't have this button on the screen, so let's go ahead and add it. If I insert a button here, and it should just name it, well, it's named it button four. So let's go in and, and change that now. Select button four. And what is that button going to do? that button is going to be what navigates us. I go into the on select of the button and I navigate to the landing screen. All right, so now once it gets to the bottom of my code for this screen, it's gonna run all my code. And then if this global auto nav is set to true, meaning it's supposed to auto navigate, it will select that button, it'll push it and it'll navigate me away. Right. I don't like this ugly button on the screen, so I just hide it. I change its visible property to off, and now it will run, select that button, and navigate away. So let's talk about that global auto nav right, in the on visible properties here. The reason that I use this variable, A, you can't navigate away from a screen without selecting a button, but B, if we just selected the button every time, we could never actually come to the screen to take a look at the code and work on it if we needed to make changes or updates because Power Apps would, would run this code every time we access the screen, it would kick us off into the other screen. So I also, for that reason, like to add into my applications a developer screen that's never seen in the published application, but it exists here in the studio. When we open up the app, in the on start, I set that global auto nav to true. So when somebody's actually using the application, it will set that to true, and then it will always auto navigate from the splash screen. But when I'm in the studio, I don't want it to auto navigate. So I add in a Blake screen here, and I rename the screen as developer. There's no way for anyone to ever access the screen. Okay, it's just within this maker portal. portal. And then I insert in here um, a toggle. Let's see if I can find that. And in the on change property, I set global auto nav to self 
up value. All right, so I want it to auto navigate or I don't want it to auto navigate. Okay, and this is in a developer screen for me so that I can come here and change that. Now that I've set it, let's set it to true. Now when I come to splash screen two, it will run my code for me. It's changing my titles here. And then it's going to land me at the landing screen as soon as it's processed that code. Ta-da, perfect. Now, if I, as a developer, ever need to make some changes, I come here to the developer tab, I turn that auto nav off and I come to the splash screen and now I can access this and it won't auto navigate me away and I can change the code, I can, I can make changes here. That's the easiest way I know of to create a splash screen. Would love to hear in the comments if you've got a better way that you know of to do this. Um, but like I said, this is the method and pattern that works best for me. And I include it in every single one of my applications. Hope this has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching.